Hello, and welcome to the Langchain Zero to Hero, an unofficial tutorial series teaching you everything you need to know about the Langchain tech stack to get started with your own generative AI projects. This episode zero is going to focus on your setting up your development environment and preparing for future episodes. This series unfolds in real time, so you can follow along every step of the way. Before we get started, there are four initial requirements you must install before starting this tutorial. You can install Python, Poetry, Durenv, and the Langchain CLI via the links in the description. Additionally, you can download a skeleton project from the release tab of the Cutwell slash Langchain Zero to Hero GitHub project. The release for each episode will contain all the code from previous episodes, so you can jump into any episode of the series without having to complete past episodes. For today, simply navigate to the Cutwell slash Langchain Zero to Hero GitHub project, go to the Releases tab, click Episode Zero Getting Started, and download the zip file. Once you have that installed, open it in your favourite IDE, today I'll be using Visual Studio Code, and we can get started. The files that you've downloaded, you don't need to worry about for now. They'll mostly be useful once we start to move our project onto GitHub. To get started, open an integrated terminal or a terminal of your choice in your project uh, root. Today, I'll be using the Windows subsystem for Linux, but you can work through this with any project that supports all of the dependencies that I mentioned. The first command that we're going to want to run is using the Langchain CLI to create our new app. Langchain supports templates, which allows us to create apps, uh, the skeleton of an app, very easily. Now, we're going to create a new template called My App. If we let that run, you'll see that we've created a new folder inside our project root. If we open it up, we can see that there are several files located within it. Let's cd into the project. Looking at the files that Langchain has generated for us, we have two folders and three files. We can ignore the license and the readme file, but we'll be interested in the pyproject.toml file. This is used by poetry. We can ignore most of what's listed here, but what we are going to want to do is install the dependencies into our system. We can do this simply by typing poetry install. This will create a virtual environment within our My App folder, allowing us to run Python projects with the dependencies that we just looked at. Whilst we wait for this to install, let's inspect some of the other files that Langchain created for us. Inside the My App file, you can see that we have two subfiles, chain.py and init.py. What we're going to want to do is actually delete the contents of init.py, as there's currently a bug with uh, importing some of the files and objects that we'll need later. Once we've done that, we can go back to chain.py and have a read through what has been created. This file may look complicated, but it actually breaks down into three different steps. The first is to import two objects from the Langchain library. The first is the chat open AI object. What this enables is for us to access the open AI API using the Langchain framework. The second is the chat prompt template, which will allow us to interact and prompt the open AI system to respond with a certain uh, output. Looking at the prompt variable, we create an instance of the chat prompt template with this from messages initialization function. What this takes as an input is a list of tuples. What we can infer from each of these tuples is that they are different types of messages for the OpenAI system to interpret. The first is a system message. System messages in a large language model uh, development 
essentially refers to messages that are going to be um, instructing the system on how to behave. We can also see that that is the case here. As we tell the system, you are a helpful assistant who speaks like a pirate. And this will be how our model will behave, or strive to behave. The next is a human message. This will be what we want to uh, say to the model, uh, a question we might want to ask it. But currently, this only has this uh, list format, or this string format, accepting a parameter text. We'll come back to this in a moment. Moving on to the model, we initialize our chat OpenAI model. What this will do is in the background, connect to the OpenAI API and allow us to make requests. Finally, we create our chain. Now, lang chains are, uh, as the name might suggest, uh, chains, sequences of uh, objects and functions which can be run together in order to uh, uh, perform certain functions. In this case, we are combining our prompt with our model in order to create a chain that, when we pass through the correct parameter, will then respond like a pirate. Let's create a test example. Let's go into our tests folder, which you can see doesn't contain any test files, and create a new file called test underscore chain dot py. The first thing that we're going to want to do is to import this chain from our my app project. We can do this by typing from my app dot chain since we are looking inside the chain.py file of the my app module, import chain. And then we're going to want to create our test. Define a test called test chain. It can be the same name as the uh, file itself. That's not a problem. We're not going to accept any input parameters. And all that we're going to do within this test is print chain.invoke and pass through a dictionary with a single key text and we're going to accept a user input. Now this is quite a lot. Working backwards, we accept a user input and use it to create a dictionary where the key is text and the value is our user input. We then pass this dictionary object as an argument to this invoke method of the chain object. The chain object, the invoke method, what does this mean? Well, going back to chain.py, we can see that we've created this chain object. But why, why do we invoke it? Well, invoking is the way we, that we can call the chain, that we can execute the chain. So why are we passing through the dictionary object? This is how we can pass through variables and input parameters. You'll see that we're passing through the text key, which corresponds with the text uh, string formatting variable that we're expecting inside the human message of our chat prompt template. Chat prompt template is special because it can accept these uh, string formatting strings um, and then format in the actual variables at a later date. That's what we're doing here. When we create our chain, this is still undefined. However, when we invoke our chain, we are then saying this variable, which was previously undefined, set it to some string. In this case, whatever the user types in. Now, let's actually test. But before we can do that, Looking inside our poetry pi project file, you'll notice that none of the dependency listed are pytest. So let's add that. Now that we've installed all of our previous dependencies, we can say poetry add pytest. But we don't want to add it at poetry add pytest. We'll simply add it to the main dependencies group. 
We don't want to do that because we only want to use PyTest when we're developing our application. So let's add in the group flag and say that we want to add this to the dev group. Once this is executed, which will just take a couple of seconds, we'll be able to look back into our pyproject.toml file and see that PyTest has been added. This is simply a way of managing the dependencies so that if we wanted to use this application in a production environment where we don't need access to our development dependencies, we can simply choose not to install them. All of these dependencies are managed within the same virtual environment. There is no sort of tiering or hierarchy, so you can have access to PyTest the exact same way you'd have access to Langchain or OpenAI. Poetry simply allows us to manage groups in order to tidy things up. Now, finally, let's run PyTest. This command here allows us to run PyTest as a Python module and search through all of the subfolders and files until we find something with test underscore, which indicates that it is a PyTest or a test file. Once this runs through and collects all the tests, it will start to execute them. Haha! -ha. Now this we should have expected. Remember when I said that we were using chat open AI? Well, in order to access chat open AI, we need to have an API key. This is very easy to obtain, simply visiting the uh, OpenAI API website and signing up allows you to create an API key. The link will be in the description. But we need to somehow get this API key accessible to our project. There's numerous ways that we can do it, but remember how I said to install Durenv earlier? It allows us to create environment variables and store them specific to our project. Now, you should never share your OpenAI API key or any other type of secret. Here are two files that I've created earlier. .envrc is the file which will contain the OpenAI API key. But since I can't show you my OpenAI API key, I can show you the example file, which should indicate what the rest of the .envrc file looks like. Now a .envrc file is very simple. When Durham finds this file, it's simply going to execute the contents in a similar way to any .sh script. Now, exporting the OpenAI API key with some value, this of course will be replaced with whatever value you uh, obtained from the OpenAI API website, uh, will allow us to expose our API key to our application. Now, all that we have to type is durenv allow, and you'll see that it is searched through not just the current uh, folder that we're in, but also every parent folder, locating any .envrc file and uh, exporting the contents. So now we have exported our OpenAI API key, and we can try to run PyTest again. The reason why API keys are needed, or that we're accessing our uh, LLM via an API, is that foundational models are incredibly large and can be very expensive to run. It is very possible to run uh, LLMs on local systems, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to be using OpenAI as it's the most easily accessible on the widest range of devices as well. Now, our test has run, but we seem to be waiting around. Why is this? Well, that's because we're waiting for some input. So let's say, hi. After we say hi, we'll have completed the list of messages that are expected and our actual uh, messages that we'll be sending to the chat OpenAI object will be our system message to behave like a pirate and a human message. But instead of the text uh, placeholder, it will simply say hi, because that's what we typed. Going back to our tests, you can see that we've returned uh, or printed 
Content equals quotation mark. Ahoy there, matey. Tis a pleasure to have ye aboard. What can I do for ye on this fine day? It's very in character, and it's worked perfectly. But perhaps we don't want to have this content equals. Why is it there? Well, if we go back into test chain.py, you can see that we're printing the result of chain.invoke. Now chain.invoke returns an object. So if we instead wish to only print the actual content of the message, we can simply say dot content onto the end of our chain.invoke. What chain.invoke actually returns is a uh, instance of a class called AI message, which is the response uh, from our AI, from our LLM. And we can do other things with this, but for the moment, let's just print the content attribute of whatever chain.invoke is returning. Furthermore, instead of having to manually type in an input parameter each and every time, it can be useful to construct your tests in a way that can be run independently without any sort of user input. So in this instance, I'm going to replace the text that we're sending to the LLM, uh, supposedly from a human, with a longer message. Let's see what happens. Hi there. Do you have any gold for me? Let's save our file and run our test again. This should now execute a lot faster because we're not having to wait for the user to type in any input. Now, once our messages have been constructed and sent to OpenAI, it will formulate the next message in the sequence. And you can see here, we don't even have the content equals quotation mark. We simply have the response in this case, a very in-theme uh, message about uh, the LLM actually being an assistant. See, in this case, it thinks that we've gotten a bit too carried away and wants to get us back on track with simply being a pirate-themed assistant and not a real pirate. Now, at this point, you have everything you need to continue on with this web series. In future episodes, we'll be diving into how to make more complex chains and how to more thoroughly test your application with other parts of the Langchain ecosystem. Thank you very much for working through this episode zero with me, and I look forward to working with you in future episodes.